Hi, and welcome to Top Solid 7. In this video, we're going to take a look at a couple of different ways of controlling a raster style cut. Now, to begin with, what I want to do is I want to machine, let's say, this face. And you can see this is not any type of very complex part. This is just to kind of set the pace for what we're going to do here. So if I select this face and I start with sweeping, for example, I'm going to go pick a tool. I'm going to use my 3 16th ball end mill. Now, when I do sweeping, Sweeping toolpath is going to cut along what's called the ISO U or ISO V of the surface. Now, in this surface, those ISO curves are tilted at an angle. So if I was to click OK right now, it would create toolpath just fine. But if we look at this, this toolpath is going at a slight angle. And, you know, it's just, again, it's following the way this surface was defined. Now, in some cases, you want to control the orientation of the cut. So we're going to take a look at a couple ways of doing that. The first way would be to create a surface that has the ISO curves facing in the direction you want. How can we do that? Well, let's switch to CAD mode. I'm going to go here and I'm going to offset a plane up some distance. And again, it's not so important how high it is. It's just so it's above my part here. Okay. And now I'm going to create a sketch there and I'm going to project the profile of that face. That creates a planar profile. I can then go here and I can make that into a flat surface. Now, why would I do that? Well, first, I want to go look at my ISO curves. So if I go to isoparametric now, oop, go here. Now you'll notice if we look straight at this, by making a flat face that was on a plane that was parallel with our XY plane, the ISO U or ISO V curves are parallel with the X and Y axis. Okay? So now by doing that, we don't need this sketch actually, by doing that, now we can machine this face. Now let's hide this uh, plane really quick. So now we're going to go ahead and machine this face. So let's go back to machining. Oops, I got to get out of my sketch too. Go back to machining. I'm going to go edit this and watch. Actually, you know what? I'm not going to edit that. I'll make a new one just so we can see the differences. So now if I go to sweeping on that, double click there to change that. Now you'll notice that tool path is relative to the X axis, whereas the tool path underneath it was following the ISO curves as before. Now you may be asking yourself, okay, that's great, but uh, how does that help you? Well, it helps you because now that you've created a guide surface, we can come into here and we can ask the software to simply project. Project under. And now it has projected that toolpath onto that face. And that toolpath is now oriented the way you want it. You may be doing this because you want to leave your cutter marks following a flow in a specific direction. Again, the choice is yours. This is just to show you a way of controlling it. Now, another way to control toolpath, just to give you a secondary option, would be this. I'm going to go back to my CAD side, and over here, I'm going to create another sketch on this plane. And this could be 3D curves as well. I'm going to use 2D curves just to kind of illustrate the point a little bit. So I'm going to go from here to there, maybe. And I'm going to go to another one, and I'm going to go from here to maybe there. Maybe we'll flare that out a little bit more like so. Good enough. What I'm going to use here is this. I'm going to go ahead and make a 3D finishing. I'm going to be on a raster pass. But what I'm going to do in the raster pass is I'm going to change from simple rest, uh, raster to a long longitudinal curve. When you go to that, you have to go to geometry and you have to select your two guide curves. So for example, I can go now and select this profile and this profile. Sorry, that one and that one. Perfect. Make sure these zeros are facing in the same direction. Click OK. And now what happens there is the software is going to follow the orientation of these curves and blend between them in a raster style pass. So this is just another way for you to control your cutter path and get it to machine the part with the specific motion you're after. Hope you found this tutorial handy. Check back soon for more.